All right, KISS Army, welcome to the KISS FAQ podcast. Thank you for letting us into your head. I hope we don't do any damage. This is a KISS-related podcast by the board for the board. We hope you enjoy. Welcome to episode 47 of the KISS FAQ podcast. I'm Julian Gill, one of your hosts. Joining me today are Andrew. Good afternoon, Andrew. Good afternoon. Who is, of course, a live cat man on the board. And Ken, 69th Blizzard, welcome back. Good to see you both. And before we do anything, I'm just going to burn something on the show. There we go. I've burnt something on the show before any (laughs) other show gets to burn anything, even if they didn't know they were going to be burning stuff. So, Well, no, before before we get started, I have to show off the 1979 tour shirt. There you go. That's original. That's wrinkled. And it has... Well, we don't want to see your ass. Uh, oh, you no. See? Uh, yeah, yeah. It says security on the back. Security. Yeah. So That's it's a nice. cool one, and it's 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 uh, it's original. I don't know if the bat. I don't know if it's like a legitimate security shirt, but uh, it's definitely an original '79 shirt because the tag matches my other ones. Or they're all fake and from the same faker. Um. Yeah, that could be. <laughs> but uh, I bought them all in different states from different people, so it would be kind of weird yeah. that if they all. But it could happen. It could Hi- happen. Highly improbable, Star Child. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so, or Catman. So the uh, the topic today, we're actually digging into VHS. We are going back in time to a time when life was more simple. Ronald Reagan ruled, and people were expected to spend fifty nine ninety five on a video. Mm. Um, you know. So we're going to start with the the early Kiss videos, and I'm going to throw it straight up there. And the first one I'm aware of, anyway is, of course, Kiss Meets the Phantom of the Park came out on World Vision, 85 or 86, so it might actually be the second. But right, come the at, second. Yeah, it came after Animal Eyes. But I want to get rid of Phantom because we've had a show dedicated to that monstrosity before. You've Same got it. Thing. Yeah, yours looks like it's been eaten by rats as well. Well, I mean, here's the thing. like Because it's been eaten by rats, um, and it's like all taped together, but this was like, I was three years old when I got this. And it was... And it replaced... Because I had a Betamax uh, copy of one of the TV airings, and it might have been the original 78 airing, but I had a Betamax, and this replaced my Betamax. And, of course, I was kind, and I rewound the tape last time I watched it. But uh, So I had this to replace the Beta, and I still wish I had that Beta, because if it was the original airing, that means it had all the original bumpers of the commercials. But it's been gone for, there you go, it's been gone for 25 years. But uh, So, yeah, I got this guy. Good times. And it was recorded in LP mode. That's how you know. Not only does the movie suck, it was recorded in a shitty mode LP. Come on. The only thing worse than LP is EP. Right. Oh, <laughs> God. Yeah. I've got a VCR sitting right here, so I should actually know what the hell that is. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I didn't own that back in the day because if I was actually looking through Billboard today trying to find one of the ads for these because these tapes mm. in 85, 86 were horrendously expensive. Yeah. So back when they came out, I couldn't afford them. And... You know, I had no interest in Phantom of the Park anyway. I don't don't remember if it just never made a connection. I can't remember why at that stage. Um, I didn't care. Ken, did you own Phantom on VHS? I, I did own it. Um, I mean, I saw the original airing, so when it finally came out on VHS, I was happy, but I wasn't too happy about the price. <laughs> came out. I think I think I got my mother to buy it for me, uh, maybe as a gift or something. But uh, it was, yeah, that, it was, yeah, like you said, it was probably somewhere around. 60 bucks or something like that and uh, but I was very excited when it came out so, so I was able to watch it again uh, the first time since 1978 you know first time I saw it in 78 so um, get, and then getting older a little bit then you start to see the seeing the little hokiness that I didn't see when the, on the first airing <laughs> that I saw so uh, but uh, yeah, I love that I love to watch it pull it out every now and then do either one of you guys have it on Laserdisc? No. I do not. I do. I do. Do you have I a Laserdisc on... player? I do. Well, I had a Laserdisc player about 15 years ago, and my uh, my DVD, because I made a DVD of this, my mm. DVD is from the Laserdisc. Oh, okay. And uh, it's it's probably the nicest copy of Phantom I've ever seen. Way better than the Cheesy Flicks version uh-huh. that came out on DVD years years ago. But yeah, this... that, that one's just a, a, so, a VHS transfer, a Cheesy Flicks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, so I think they should probably put this on Blu-ray. They right? could. They could, but I don't think they own the rights to this version. That's why we got Attack of the Phantoms on Kissology. Right. Mm. So, 
You know, I always joke, you know, Led Zeppelin got Song Remains the Same, Kiss got Hanna-Barbera music, and it sounds like a cartoon. What happened? Why did this happen? But anyway. But anyway, if, if, you, if uh, anybody out there has the, uh, the Laserdisc or Laserdisc player, it is by far the best version of the film. By far. By far. Cool. So fifty nine ninety five was horrendously expensive in the mid in, in the mid fifties. I wonder mm. what that I wonder what that translates to in today's money. You know, one point two trillion. One point two trillion for a, vi- a video nowadays. So, all right, that's enough about Phantom. Obviously, it's I believe it's exactly the same as the TV broadcast. Ken, do you recall the details on that or? Uh, the, that, oh, that video? Yeah. Um, yeah, I believe it was. Yeah. It, it actually isn't. The aspect oh. ratio is slight, is cropped slightly differently. Oh, is that where they cut off their heads at the top? Yep. That's, that's the thing. Yeah. Well, yep. I didn't, the laser disc is different. That's like a, that's like correct. a given now. But, uh, yeah, yeah. They, they, nope. they cut off their heads like, oh, what the heck? It's just really poorly <laughs> framed, but the laser disc version is the correct aspect ratio and it's framed properly. So there's a little trivia, piece of trivia for you. This not a good laser disc, much better. So you're gonna sell the copies of that on eBay, right? I can't. I you know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk off air about my bootlegging days. We'll talk off air about that. <laughs> All right, so let's move on to what was actually the first video release, right? All right, Animal. Animalized Live Uncensored, mm-hmm. which I never bought at the time because I actually saw the show on uh, MTV, and I didn't tape it, but I'd already seen it, so. Once was enough back then. Later on, when I'm living in Singapore, um, there was a, an Indonesian bootleg cassette of the show anyway, so there was the audio for me. I didn't want to watch the video every time I wanted to hear the music, so that met my needs for many years. And well, this come out in uh, May 1985. I'm just looking at the chart action here. Reached number five on the video charts and actually charted for 55 weeks in Billboard, which is nuts. And you said May 19th? I thought it was April 19th when it came out. May was when it first started charting. So, okay, okay. So April is the release date. Okay. So over a year on the on the Billboard charts, went gold in February 86 and platinum in October 1987. So thoughts on Animalized Live Uncensored. I'm sorry, it sounds like chipmunks on acid listening back to it. It's way too fast. The tempo's mm-hmm. too high. The... The video editing is really good. It's a cool-looking show, but for me, I can't handle 80s tempo kiss anymore. It's just, especially for the original songs. They don't even sound like the same songs, some of them. And what's actually cool, I obviously wasn't old enough to get the original copy. I mean, what was I? I was five days old when it came out. I was five days old when that came out. (laughs) Um, But... uh, I actually I got a I didn't even get an original VHS copy of it at first I got a, a dubbed copy of it from somebody and I had and I thought it was cool I didn't even know songs like Under the Gun I was like what song is this because I really wasn't into non makeup kiss at the time but this was like my first introduction into uh, into non makeup kiss since then you know I I had, I never got an original VHS copy but I did get that Japanese DVD which is great uh, it is I think it's bootleg so don't buy it slash please buy it but. Uh, you know, so that's that's really cool. The laser disc obviously is cool as well. Um, but I actually have an original airing on VHS still of the uh, the abridged concert, or the uh, or, or yeah yeah the abridged concert, which is kind of cool too. It's uh it's cool to see that it's nothing. There's nothing different in there. It's just kind of cool to see a little shorter. However, the coolest thing about this is that the concert was aired on FM radio the same night, so you could track down the actual FM broadcast and you could see or you could hear. How much overdubbing went into that show, which was a ton, a ton, a ton, a ton. Probably more overdubbing than any other official Kiss release that I'm aware of. Hmm. That's well, that's still on my list. And Ken, didn't you have the DVD of this? Yeah, I do have a DVD of this here, right here. It's this. That's one. what I got. That's the Brazilian one with the Portuguese subtitles. I right, think. it has subtitles in it. Exactly. Which is mine has re- mine's Japanese subtitles. Yeah, this one uh, I think. has Spanish subtitles. So. Don't know, but uh, uh, I watched it a little bit of it yesterday, actually, just to kind of go back and see, you know. And uh, I, I thought it was pretty darn good. Con- it was better than I remembered, actually. And, um, and like you said, Julian, the filming was, you know, well done, edited right, and you know, real good from that standpoint. Uh, this has, of course, more material on it than the MTV, what they showed on MTV, because you know they 
cut cut things out. Um, the other thing I noticed is the only thing I didn't like is uh, you know the speed, the up tempo. Um, I just I that's just the one thing that bothered me through the eighties when they when they kicked in gear and they oh, slow down, sped everything slow down. up. Just play it like it was meant to be played uh, originally. Um, the other thing I noticed is you know Paul Stanley, man, he was jumping, kicking, spinning. It's, just, it's no wonder. I mean, just watch him do it so much. And he, he was doing that every night, you know, every concert night that they played. Uh -huh. No wonder his knees need to be replaced and his hips and his shoulder. And, I mean, the guy just went all out. I don't know how he did it. He must. He was in great condition, you know, back then. What else is cool about this show? Does any, any of you guys know the other piece of Kiss trivia that's cool about this show? No, Andrew, tell us. Jeans <laughs> wig. <laughs> that's that's not cool, but uh, <laughs> December December eighth, nineteen eighty four. Oh, as a first, Bruce Kulick's first, first show as, as a member. As a member. Oh yes, Bruce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He looked funny. The thing, other thing I was about is worth. He had the uh, like they said, he stood like a tree, and Spruce he had the sleeveless, sleeveless, you know, arms. So he's this kind of tall, tall, this tall, skinny guy. He should have had something covering his arms, and he didn't kind of figure out his style yet. He looked way better than Vinny did, I tell you that. Every time I saw Vinny, I'm like, what the? F Every time. That's true. Every yeah. time. But, you know, it does have good points because while I don't like the tempo, I do like the Eric car cams. Every time yes. they, sh they do close-ups mm -hmm. on Eric, you know, obviously my, my heart gets heavy seeing him, but what a monstrous drummer that dude was. I mean, yeah. and just look at the passion that he's playing. I mean, I love Eric Carr. Yeah, you know, and and just looking back at this show, it's very '80s. It's dated now. When you look back and you think they were doing the tempo thing, I mean, we hear the variety of reasons. You know, because other bands are playing faster, sure. Kiss had to play faster, or maybe because they were playing to three thousand people, they wanted to get the shows over quicker. You know, <laughs> yeah. whatever. Yeah, more songs the, out. Whatever the case. Um, other high point for me is Paul Stanley, and you mentioned his acrobatics. I mean, he, he went full on David Lee Roth in the '80s, um, mm. being he was a hell of a front man. I mean, oh my God, yeah. he is yeah. just, you know, he's impressive. The part I don't like when he's sticking his finger in his mouth and all that, you know, and you know, I can do without that. But he, <laughs> you know, he's very charismatic on this, and it's fun to look back at him in his prime. All of them, Gene. I'm sorry, Gene. Uh, he, he didn't look good in this era. Um, so, <laughs> you know, I can't. Well, I think he looked at the whole eight. This is where he looked the best because, like, the next tour he looked like B. Arthur. Well, yeah. And then Crazy Nights, he was wearing that the leather vest with no, like, he just the leather vest, and he had his arms, and he had like, these little tassels. I'm like, what? Who told you that looked good? And who was like, damn, I look good? Like, who, who said that? I want to know. It's awful. Yeah. Uh, okay. I'll agree with you on that. That it, it's <laughs> not as bad as it could have been. But, yeah. you know, it's a good video. And, you know, I think it, it really needs an official DVD release. But it, again, it's, I agree. Uh, it's, I it's agree. one of those things that Solid. they don't own the rights to, apparently. So. And that's why you'll never see Thrills in the Night on any compilation. So it actually, it's a good segue into this next, uh, the next video, which is Kiss Exposed. No Thrills in the Night. Does anyone have a copy of Kiss Exposed to hand? Because I don't, I threw mine away. I got the DVD version of it here. Yeah, yeah we see, got, there's a I, I never owned it on VHS um, just because... And this actually, this is this is for two videos that uh, that this goes for. That I never owned the V the. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa! I, wait, wait a second, now, Joe. Ken's holding up a picture of the back cover. See the picture of the carols. Yeah. I yeah. actually had a. You know how I have Google ads on the website. Someone mm -hmm. posted a picture of the carols. This exact picture, and I mm -hmm. got a porn alert from Google saying no I cannot. Way. I cannot have that on that. <laughs> I cannot have that picture. On the same page as one of the ads, so one of the companies that advertises got pissed yeah, off. Yeah, the about carols. That. Uh, the carols. How <laughs> dare they? Do you know what that meant to me as a fourteen-year-old when I saw that? Yeah, you were like, "Dang." Yeah. Sonny Crockett was dressed. Sonny Crockett, yeah. Sonny the monkey. Post toasties. Post toasties. <laughs> All right. Um, but so get, about, getting back to Andrew's thought. Sorry. Yeah, the thing about this video and the reason why I never picked up the VHS tape. Um, was because I thought it was just a music video collection. And at the time when I was first getting into the band, I didn't know about bootlegs. I didn't know about any of that stuff. I wanted a 70s concert. And then when I saw all these, I, I just thought they were music videos. I know once you get a closer look, you know, the first, the third thing on there is I Love It Loud from Rio. But I just thought that they were, they were music videos. And also the warning, the explicit content. My mother was like, 
yeah, you ain't getting that. So, um, and, and it was one of those things where I just, I never, I never got it. And then it was released on DVD and it was, it was kind of a big deal when it came out on DVD. What was it? 2001 or 2002? Because there's two DVD releases from it, and it's the same transfer. It was the actual the DVD that Ken just showed. Then it was uh, put out in Kiss Gold yeah. as well. So um, and and, both, and I think I think the version that Ken has, and I have that version too. I think that's out of print. Yeah, 2002. This one, and I do have the other one that came with uh, Kiss Gold. Yeah, we're we're nuts. We have to buy the same thing, like in yeah. different order. I don't know why they do that to us, but. Um, uh, it, it was a big deal when that came out because it was the first Kiss DVD release of the old catalog. So we were all super, I know I was excited. So anyway, so I got this and I saw this obviously much later than, uh, than anybody, than, than probably both of you guys because it's really hokey, really, really hokey. But at the time, it was probably kind of cool and very tongue-in-cheek and this is what everybody was doing. You know, Motley Crue's Home Sweet Home video at the beginning is really similar to this video, how it's just really just hokey and they're like, hey, we're a band but we like to have fun. And... It, that was kind of the, the the norm in the '80s. It was like, let's be a rock band, but let's here's a monkey. And um, <laughs> just as a side note, I think whoever photoshopped Eric Carr and Bruce Kulick into the cover should have been Come fired. On. It's <laughs> awful. It's completely awful. However, um, and this is and, and I swear I'll shut up after this because I know this is a really long one about this video, but I'm really passionate about this video. This the the stuff on this video, you know, from Houston, from Brazil, from Lar This is awesome. Why doesn't Kissology look like that? I want to know. Yep, it does look extremely good. I remember, this is obviously with the magazine issue that we did last week, mm -hmm. uh, the Kiss Exposed magazine, and the this was my first Kiss video. So 14-year-old mm -hmm. me says, wow, I mean, this is my first rock-related video that I ever purchased. So, you know, I'm very close to it. You know, obviously becoming a fan at the time, it starts off with who wants to be lonely and uh, all night. So I was a very happy guy being the Asylum uh, fan at that point. And then it really started. Okay, yeah. But, it, but then we get into Rio and mm -hmm. Winterland and Houston and Australia. And it really allowed us to start exploring the visual history that you'd only seen a bit of it on the i compilation video, which I don't even know circulated at that time because that was so just did not get around. So here we find out what Kiss really had in their vaults, no matter what they were saying at that place about, you know, they recorded every show, yeah, bullshit, because this is all you've got, basically. But, you know, the selection of videos in there is fantastic. It's got all the 80s concept videos. Um, it doesn't have a world without heroes, does it? So, no. So it has most of them, and I think it's a really good set and a pretty good greatest hit. So, you know, is it corny? Yeah. Is the jacuzzi scene cool? Hell yeah, to 14-year-old me. 14-year-old, <laughs> you you're like, dang. Yeah, it's like, boobs. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, I watched it. I remember getting it, and I watched it over and over at the beginning. Yeah, the thing that stuck out to me was, of course, all the the bootleg stuff uh and that was just awesome seeing that for the first time all those sh old shows i mean i only saw uh dynasty and creature tours at that time but uh to have something on video where you can you know watch it back and watch those performances was just awesome um to see in the different stages that they had too and then it was the first time i saw i love it loud that video mm -hmm. that was the first time i saw it uh, uh, when buying this so uh yeah i watched it over and over there is a way on this and then i went because mark uh mark uh from the podcast said that there's a way to play all the videos without going playing everything in there and you know there's if you go to special features and put your highlight the a skull and hit play it'll play just the, the all the uh videos themselves excluding all the other extra jargon you know the girls and the extra the, jargon is what makes it though that's yeah kinda, it's so campy well it, it is silly. i mean it's, it's corny but uh if you want to just watch the videos you can just watch all those videos through i mean thinking back to what was going on in the 80s i mean we we've said it with the uh the motley crew videos you know smoking in the boys room was corny um had the kind of humor thing twisted his sister of course had their kind of slapstick crap going on so i mean paul stanley exercise and breakfast of champions and you know Toast toasties. yeah 
you know, Bruce running down the stairs. Edit her out. Edit her out. Edit her out. I mean. Eric's not even in the video. Didn't he run past the camera like one time? Yeah. So I Once mean, or twice. It, yeah. It's total cornball. Or Gene on his throne talking to the little the little vixen. I mean, that's cute. Yeah. Hey, this is a good time to mention that there's a, a three DVD collection out there called Exposed 2 Outtakes, where I guess they were filming stuff from the Hot in the Shade tour to, I guess, release a companion to this. And um, it's got cool stuff in there. It's got sound checks. It's got photo shoots, um, backstage footage of them when they were filming the uh, MTV Henbagner's Ball with Ricky Rackman uh, from 1990. And so there's there, there's a couple sound checks from when they, when they do those uh, warm-up club shows, and they're doing, like, Come On and Love Me, and, and you get to hear stuff that they never, that they never did. I would have loved to have seen the... Even I don't even know. Maybe it wasn't. It never was exposed. Maybe just a fan dubbed it that. But you, it's hunt out this DVD, three DVD set called the Exposed Two Outtakes, and it's a it's a rainy day video. It's not a video you're gonna pop in showing. Hey guys, this is Kiss. It's not one of those. It's one of those things where it's rainy day. You got nothing else better to do, and uh, it's got a lot of cool stuff on there. A lot of cool Eric Carr stuff, um, and a lot of cool sound check stuff. Not a whole lot of live stuff, and. Um, yeah, definitely seek it out. So it, it's cool. All right. So <laughs> ready to continue. All right. Next video that comes up. Uh, well, I still oh, got you've, it. you've got one as well. I mean, now I've got a Beatles song going in my head. I'm a loser. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so video EPs were the were the the thing of this stage in the '80s. So all three videos from Crazy Nights. And, you know, I, I can't bash this too much because I hate the transitions in there. I'd always wanted to get clean copies to kind of digitize. But reason to live is the reason to own this. And Turn on the Night's pretty good as well. So yeah. for a performance video. A They're not bad videos. Reason to live oh. I, I still love as a song. And, you know, it's it was really cool to get all three of these because, well, I didn't buy this at the time, did I? I paid six ninety five for it at Amoeba. Actually, I got this at Tower Records in 2001. I was in line waiting to meet Gene and Paul for the box set signing at Tower Records in New York City in 2001. And I just was, I was bored. I was literally with, waiting with my mother for eight hours outside of Tower Records. And it was a, lucky it was 60 degrees that day, so it wasn't a cold day. However, I was waiting, so we were just taking turns. I was just walking around and I, was, I saw this and I didn't have it. And that was kind of like my first getting into ha having to have everything kiss so i just saw it and i didn't have it i had seen the videos so i go i'm gonna get that so yeah so i bought this in 2001 so it was still on the shelves in 2001 yeah and that, that's not surprising because you know it came out in late 88 and it didn't go gold until 91 it only mm -hmm. spent six weeks on the chart so it didn't work out as mm -hmm. as a successful product um you know but obviously it sold enough to go gold eventually so you know it, it what what I think we see immediately is the first three Kiss videos set a precedent for success. Mm. You know, they are very popular. I'm I'm going to throw the next one out here, and we're going out of sequence, but we're going to throw him in here just because we're not haters. You know, we mm. got to ha let's have some blue Kool Aid because this is the next video that comes out sequentially, and it's Frelly's Comet or Ace, whatever. Just it is. as long as it's not Ace Vision. I'm not. <laughs> You know, I've got some shit copy of that with a photocopied cover. I don't know if, how official it is. You know, was he well, duplicating that in the, in his hotel room before shows during the tour while he was I, in between ironing on, yeah, uh, I, you know, for Jimmy Page never ironed on his own T-shirts, but Ace really did. Um, uh, I, I don't know. I know the guy that actually put that together. Who's is that actually, Stryker? Uh, yeah, Stryker put that together, who's a good friend of mine. And I know Stryker's heart was in the right place with that. And I know he did the very best that he could with whatever he was given at the time. He was given so, Ace Frehley, and that's a challenge yeah, at that point anyway, isn't it? Yeah. But, okay, so Live Plus 4, that's okay. Is that, the, um, is that the one where Ace is like, hello, London? Yes. England. Yes. Is that that? <laughs> yes. You know, it's, it's got live segments recording at, at the uh, Hammersmith Odeon. In uh, March '88, what is that? One, two, three, four, five, six songs plus the four videos. So I mean, it's a cool package. He had the right idea with this of marrying performance and concept and putting out something that was cool. Um, you know, I like it. Again, it would be worthy of a DVD release with the full 
Hammersmith because there are outtakes mm -hmm. from that that circulate in fan circles. I was just going to talk about that. Yeah, do because you're more keyed in on video than I have ever been. It's it's boring and Ace is working a lot of the camera so the camera kind of looks like the Blair Witch Project <laughs> and I don't know if I've ever actually made it through a whole thing. I've right. watched parts of it and then I get to it and I'm just like I can't I can't even do this. I can't. Mm. It's on YouTube, so if you want to seek it out, it's on YouTube. Uh, I don't even know if I have it in my in my collection. I'm not even sure. Um, but it's definitely it's, it would be a cool bonus feature. I think what is there like 50 minutes of this? I think it's, it's about yeah. 50 minutes. If somebody could edit it down to like the best 15 minutes, it would be an awesome bonus feature. Because sitting through 50 minutes of Ace going, "Hey, this is my camera. Hey, hey, Bobby." <laughs> Sitting through 50 minutes of that, I'm like, what, what, I can't do, I, I get like, I get like my blood starts to boil, and I'm like, I can't, I can't sit through it, I have to turn it off. You just need but, some illicit substances to get through that sort of crap. Yeah, you do. But Someone just needs to edit it down. Presumably, they filmed the whole show, because I don't think this is sequential, just like the first part of the show. I think it's a cut and paste from, of various songs, so is the full show, was it filmed? Because Well... Remember back then, it was really expensive to archive any kind of footage, not just film. It was expensive it's to archive ex video. It footage. wasn't expensive for Ace to archive. He had a garage. That's where he put his shit. Yeah, that's where. What did Anthony Esposito say that he had like stacks of albums just in a garage? I'm like, yeah, you, you got your mind. But I mean, it was expensive to to archive that stuff. So and and a lot of times, you know, if you had who put who put out that video, who was the distributor that put out that video? Mm. Um, Atlantic. Okay, do you really think Atlantic Records, the home of Led Zeppelin, do you think if they ran out of shelf space, they were going to be like, hey, Ace really live at the Hammersmith Odeon, do you think they were going to keep, no, they were, that's the first thing they were throwing out. Let's make room for the fifth copy of a Led Zeppelin remaster before we save this pilot shit. It's a great video, but I mean, when you put it up with other things, it's probably the first thing to go. So if the whole show was filmed, it, it was probably thrown out, or maybe it's in a box somewhere. Or, or maybe it'll be auctioned off for $25,000 somewhere down the line. Uh, hey, we're back. I'm not <laughs> editing that one out. <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. I think I had that video, but I, you know, I don't even remember it, and that's probably maybe a good thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and I don't want to f spend time flipping you know, on web pages trying to figure out how much more of the show was recorded, but I think Greatest Hits Live has some uh, additional material from London. Mm -hmm. So... It probably, oh, yeah, that's it, right. I forgot about that. Yeah, it probably, that's what leads me to assume that they probably have a source, be it audio or whatever, that, you know, I, I wouldn't mind having the whole show, be it audio it on DVD, or video. I know that. I got it on DVD. Unofficially, right? Of course. Yeah. <laughs> that's why I had this. I, I thought I would try and do a transfer of it, but I just never have the time or the energy to kind of deal with it. So. I got it. I think I even did the transfer myself. Back in the day. All hey, right. What's next? All right. So that did that. That actually did better than uh, Crazy Nights. That charted higher. Did mm. it really? Hit number fourteen. All right. Extreme close up. I do not have a copy of that anywhere. Me I've, neither. I, well, I have the DVD versions of that. Uh, yeah, I got the DVD. The one that's it's combined. The which is a, which is great. Which is great. They put it together. That was yeah. the way to do it. And in uh, the early 2000s, that was, wasn't it? That mm -hmm. they put these out again. So let's go back to 1992. This comes out. This is in conjunction with the Revenge Era, of course. So comes out, hits number 19 on the on the charts. And Now, there are two versions of this. There are two versions of this. There's yeah. this version, then there was the pay-per-view version, which I don't know if it ever aired, but VH, VH1 uh, aired an abridged version of mm. it. Um a couple that. years later with Sebastian Bach hosting, yep. which I used to have. Mm. I don't have it anymore. I've still got that. That's pretty cool, actually. And It is cool. It is I, cool. I, I usually insult Sebastian, and I'll say that he was a good host. He did a good job. He, he, did, he did a great job. Um, so there are two versions of this, and this is a cool, um, a cool thing. And it was like the first thing like this to come out. We've had several documentaries come out since then with the band being interviewed. We'll probably talk about one or two more later. But this was the first thing that uh, came out that kind of had the band telling the story. And it was at a point where right around this time is when the band started really appreciating their, their past. Because through the 80s, they, were like, they weren't really talking about the makeup era. They weren't really doing that. But for some, something happened around 1990 and then 91 and now we're at 92 where they were kind of, okay, this is kind of cool. Like we had, we had a cool thing 
we had a cool thing going. So you had cool live excerpts in here. Um, and this is some of the first footage that a lot of us saw from Cadillac High. Yep. Um, yep. But this was cool stuff. And again, the stuff on this is way, way, way better than the stuff that ended up on Kissology ultimately. And there's a cool clip on here. I don't know where it comes from. Maybe one of you guys do. Where Gene is holding Peter's hand and kind of dragging him. Oh, yeah. Somewhere. Where yeah. is that from? Someone told me where that's from and I can't remember. I, have no I don't idea. know where it's from. I'll... The next time I come on, I'll find out. So I'm going to remind myself to do that because someone told me where that's from. And it might have been mm, – I don't know. Someone told me and I'll find out. I'll find out. So, so this is basically the same as Exposed. It's clips again. It's a mix of videos. It's excerpts um, you know, from, from a whole bunch of things. But it's done more seriously than Kiss mm -hmm. Exposed. Obviously, you don't have uh, any of the cornball stuff going on in it. You know, I loved this when it came out. I've, I've still got a copy sitting at my house in Scotland, which unfortunately we no longer own, so I can't ever get it back. Um, absolutely I got loved it, just like Mark does. Yeah, Mark. Ken, sorry, sorry, yeah. Mark. I, sorry, I mean, Mark. I loved it too, and uh, I played again. This is another one I played over and over. Um, I'm gonna watch this today. Yeah, I watched a little bit of it yesterday, um, just to put it in and, and, and try to remember, you know, all about it, what was going on at the time. But um, it was the first, like you said, Andrew, time that they started talking about the history, how the band formed, more or less. Um, uh, their, I guess you could say it's their side of the story. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know what Ace and Peter would have said <laughs> had they done it Does at the same time. But, uh, it, yeah, all the old videos looked great again. Um, yeah, why the quality of Kissology was a little bit down below the quality of Ugh, what was on those. It's, it just not. doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, um, and, and they just fiddled around. I don't think they had great sauces, and they fiddled around with them too much. So, you know, Kissology is a bit of monstrosity. But, you know, let's get into some of the technical details of this. This is their first number one video, which, mm -hmm. you know, I, I'm just looking at the chart action here, and 102 weeks on the charts through, I mean, it, it and came back in the charts in 1996 because the reunion you know, uh -huh. in 97, it had a fourth charting. So this video had extremely long legs when dating from, you know, September, August, September of 92 when it's released all the way through to the end of the Alive Worldwide tour in June 97 is finally when it drops off the charts. So, and I want to say VH1 was airing this pretty regularly during the Farewell Tour. Yeah. Because I think I recorded it the night I went to see Kiss on the Farewell Tour. You know, mm -hmm. if they're airing it and it's charting and you know, it bespeaks the quality that this one release really embodies. And, you know, it's, I think it's probably one of my top Kiss videos in the video catalog. So, I like they, uh, Oh, sorry. Didn't they, during the, the Farewell Tour uh, VH1, they had the other one, the Kiss Beyond the Makeup. That was during that, 2002. That, well, that was 2002. After. Okay. Or, no, okay. or 2001, it premiered. It right yeah, after. That, that was a good one. That, um, that told even the, the more of a full story than what they'd had on there, but it was, you know, it was cool. Both hit fast forward through the 80s. Like you get 83, they're like, okay, we have. Yeah. And once we put out Hot in the Shade, and then we put out Revenge, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. Actually, I want to read. I'm on um, Kiss FAQ slash video slash long form. There's actually a really cool. Uh, I guess Julian wrote this. It's, it's a little abridged history. It says, Tracks 15 to 16 from Don Kirshner's Rock Concert. Track 19 from Magic Mountain Show Film for Kiss Me to Phantom of the Park. Track 24 from Rock Pop TV UK. Tracks 25 and 26 for Mario Canara Stadium June 83. An extremely mislabeled product with many things appearing which were not listed on the packaging. Same person as Alive 3. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, I, and I might even write because Rock Pop is not freaking UK, so... So, and it's whoever had, whoever was the catalog consultant at this point, I'm assuming is, well, definitely no longer the catalog consultant, but whoever was at that time was just an idiot. So, <laughs> so therefore, there's some irony in that comment because. That's why I, I read it. it. That's why I read it. <laughs> you know, I've, I've, as I'm on the same page right now, and, uh, you know, I've already noticed some typos, but this page, I, I think I said in our notes, is uh, far overdue for being taken over to uh, the Kiss Monster website and updated, and I look forward to doing that. Let's go into the next video, and here I feel we start going downhill. Kiss Confidential comes out the following year, tied in with Kiss My Ass. Is it tied? No, with a no, live three. With a live three. So. This is 
a monstrosity for me, this video. I mean, throwing in the four classic video clips in the middle, the show's not that good. This is one thing that I'll say they did way better with Kissology, with the updated show, right? Yeah, they did just Detroit. And this yes. apparently is Detroit, Indianapolis, and Cleveland. Well, that, that might have been what the notes said on it, but I don't know how much I trust that. But what, I don't trust it at all. Yet. Whatever the case, getting the full show with a different audio or, or a solid audio source on Kissology was far mm -hmm. better than this. But for me back then, just getting this because I missed the Revenge tour, um, mm -hmm. it was it was good enough. So it was still cool, but they're starting to go downhill. You know, in terms of creativity, quality-wise, you know, just redoing the same kind of thing with the same clips from the same sources or different clips from the same sources, whatever. You know, after you've seen it on Exposed and uh, Extreme Close-Up, going back to that well, it's kind of, you know, disappointing for me. You know, it, it proves how little they actually do have in their vaults. Again, so... Thoughts? Yeah, I watched it a couple times, I mean, at the beginning, and... It, it just didn't hold like the rest. I mean, the, the live stuff was all, uh, you know, you could see that it wasn't the original vocals show matched to the video. They they're just changing stuck it in. They're changing, and you know, whatever they're wearing in different shots. Yeah, yeah. So, oh, wow. They did a costume change all of a sudden. Um, yeah, it's just, so, it's, it's a pretty poor, it's a pretty poor product, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. And they, like you said, Julian, they stuck those, the old videos right in the center of everything. Yep. It, they did a bunch of stuff, then they put the old videos in the center, and then fit, then did the third part back to what it was in the first part. Um, so, eh, you know, it's okay. Pull out every now and then to see that at least they, re you know, the the revenge stage and that sort of thing, um, Statue of Liberty. But uh, still, yeah. But I want to check this. My notes say this never went platinum. It only went gold. And yeah, for a good reason. Yeah. Well, that that's quite apparent. I mean, it didn't didn't chart that well it made it to number two so it did chart highly but you know much less charting time than the other one so i think that really well, dictates like how this, popular it was this in a live three went over like a fart in church yeah yeah not surprisingly perhaps so you know let's not linger on that i don't want to linger too much on the next one either because really kiss my ass i love this this was one of my very first videos and i still have it because I remember, yeah, there you go. It, the DVD sucks, though. The DVD, it's the DVD version. Yeah, the DVD is not that good uh, because the audio isn't that good on there. The audio on the uh, Extreme Close Up and Confidential two pack is way better than the audio on this. It looks like that just a straight just VHS dump on that. But what was cool about this? There were a lot of bands at at the time that were releasing videos that were just their music videos. So when when I first saw this in stores, I thought it was just all the Kiss My Ass videos, because I, I knew Kiss My Ass was, I didn't even own the album at the time. Mm. I was just like, eh, whatever. But then a couple of years later, when I'm looking for a Kiss concert on video, you know, at my local Suncoast video, I saw this, and then for some reason I looked at the back and I go, wait a minute, this has, this has cool clips on it. And I remember getting this and watching this, and this was my favorite video for a really long time, because not only did it have uh, those cool live clips on there for stuff that I had never seen, it had, you know, the, the Kiss Dolls commercial. It had cool little, there was a Saturday Night Live skit in there. And it just, it, I thought this video was great. I thought you had Extreme Close-Up, then you had this. I was like, this is so cool. And uh, there's actually a cool little thing on the, um, on the end, you know, Black Diamond from 76. It's not, it's from the third night at Cobo Hall, That's, which I think. That, that is actually true, that we start to see some of the, the rarer stuff as mm -hmm. they start digging a little bit deeper. But, you know, it's still a lot of the same old, same old. You know, yeah, the I love a loud video on there is, is shit, but but still, I thought it was I thought it was cool. The only thing I wasn't excited about seeing was the Madison Square Garden '77 stuff because at the time I owned Madison Square Garden '77. That was actually my first bootleg ever, which I still have. But I like this video. This uh, this maybe because this was one of the first things I discovered. So I like this video. I still and that's why I still have it because it means something to me. Ken. Yeah, um, I liked it uh, to a degree. I liked, the, of course, watching the old you know, shows again. It was more of the same. Um, I think they they were showing more like uh, commercials or the ads for the albums and that sort of thing. Um, starting to do more of that, which was it was neat to see. Um, but uh, some of the other stuff, I just didn't get too you know excited about. I think they when they showed them putting together 
were they putting together Kistory? Or no, something else. The videos. No, they were putting together Kistory at the time. Was it Kistory? Yeah. Yeah. Them talking about that. Uh, I think Eric Singer was in that part of the video, and so and Gene, and they're going looking at the putting the book together. I found that <laughs> more interesting than some of the other stuff. Um, so it, it was all right, but it, it didn't match to exposed or or you know um, extreme close up. To me, those were ahead of this one. And they were definitely pulling at the strings on this one because you could tell that. Um Five years earlier, something like this would have never have come out. They were really trying to curate their history at this point. They were really trying to cash in on the old makeup stuff. They knew that that was going to be a cash cow, even in 94. They knew. So they were like, well, you know what? Let's release this book. Look at history. It's 75%, 72 to, uh, to 83. You get to the 80s. There's not, whole, there's not a whole lot about the 80s in there. But they were really trying to cash in on their, on their history, and this was the start of it. Oops, just missed a phone call. So, it it you know it's totally like you say. You know they're starting to think a little bit deeper. You know the next video that I've got listed up here. Um, I don't What's know this one, isn't it? You have that. I I never managed to get a copy. I love. I'm not. Was I okay? I love this video because the quality on the stuff on this video is fucking amazing, amazing. And the stuff on here is cool. I don't even own a VCR, so I kind of forget what's on here still. But uh, I know that there's a really – there's Sure No Something is on here. Is it listed? What is actually on here? Yeah, on. Come On and Love Me, okay. Rock and Roll Over Commercial, Love Gun okay. Commercial, Alive 2 Promo, um, a yeah. couple of Alive 2 Commercials, Double oh, Platinum yeah. commercial, Dynasty Commercials, the Solo Albums Commercial, a couple of Dynasty Commercials. Um, Dynasty Tour promo and the Sharno something video. Yeah, and, and I love I love all that stuff. And some I, cool Angel stuff on there, right as well. Yeah, but I never really got into Angel. Oh, well. But uh, it's and I actually think when I made my compilations because I made I have all my TV compilations on DVD now, um, which one day we'll get into this because it's there's no TV compilations like this. Trust me, trust me. Um, <laughs> The stuff on here is really cool, and the quality is just out of it's out of this world. And I love '70s commercials. You know, when you're watching the same the Dynasty commercial, it's like "Catch Kiss Now" at Madison Square Garden. Like the guy is right, like, who, right. who were they hired to make this? But it's still so cool because it's a snapshot of the time, and that's what I love about Kiss. So yeah. I like this video. It's I had awesome. it. Yeah, I had it when it came out. Um, no longer had, so they haven't put out a DVD of it. But uh, I remember it was cool again seeing all those commercials that you just, you never seen before, live two commercial promos and and uh, and so on. So uh, it was mostly commercial, but it was it was cool to have and, and watch every now and then. Pull it out. Um, yeah, they should put something together. I guess like Andrews put together <laughs> on, on his own. Um, they should maybe Kissology Four if they could do that. Kissology Four. One disc is going to have all the commercials. Well, maybe and I mean, that'd be too short, but they could stick well, there's, them there's all together on there. There's a whole lot of commercials. Oh yeah, but just, a a just remember, there'll never be a Kissology Four in name because Kiss does not own that name. Kiss does not own well, Kissology. Well, that's VH1 that's fine. Kiss. So they can come up with any other historical video <laughs> name or whatever you want to call it. Um, but you know. I, I don't know, but actually, it's just, a, it's just a name, so they could call it something else. This could be a a new series. So they had a Kiss Holiday could, series. Like, it start with a new series with a new name. Yeah, the, and the official Kiss Volume One, Kiss Volume Two, Volume Whatever. It could be yeah. they own that name. They own Kiss Vision. They, yeah, they, 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 they have they the trademark on that. Kiss Vision Volume One. Volume here's another two, cool. Here's on. another cool VHS tape. Um, that it's it's not uh, it's not official, but it's this right here. And what's really cool about this uh, is. Yeah. Is this was the first thing that released that uh, that silent early nineteen seventy four eight millimeter footage? It had been up on eBay. It went for does anybody remember what it went for? It didn't go for like twelve grand or something. Eight grand, I think. Eight grand, but it went. Yeah. And I remember watching that eBay auction at the time, and I was what I was fifteen. No one was going to afford that. But when this came out, I was actually looking for. Oh, it's funny. The photographer in there is by Mitch Lafon. I didn't even realize that. This is funny. Um, but what was cool about this is this was the first time that you were getting like rare footage on here. There's also um, 
stuff from the Love Gun Tour. And look, it was made in Canada. I didn't even realize that. But anyway, this is cool. It's unofficial. And this was the first time that you got kind of cool footage put out. Um, and I, I love this. I used to watch this quite a bit. I mean, it was a little boring watching the silent 8 millimeter footage from 74. And obviously someone has since then has dubbed audio to it and probably tweaked it a little bit more. So which I have that version as well. Um, and we think it's Long Beach, but it's not Long Beach, right? It's Detroit. Like, it's Detroit. Yep. Someone found out that it was actually not Long Beach. Yeah. Uh, yeah which so, is, someone did a good comparison of that and uh, figured out. I can't remember who it was, but it was. Was it Ross? Was it Ross Radley? It might have been Ross or Chris. One of those. So, doesn't matter. Um, it's a, the footage is still cool, and this was the first time that we were able to see that. And it's the whole thing isn't on here. I think there's only like 12 minutes on here, but there's like 16 minutes in total. I don't remember what it was because I don't – it's – Watching this video was a little tough because it was silent, but it was the first time you got to see stuff like that. And then, remember, around the same time, something like this came out, too. Kiss Unauthorized. Shit, so, I've actually got I've got that one sitting in the closet here, so I didn't even yeah. bother getting that one out today. Yeah, it was just in my VHS pile, and it's just kind of cool because you can there's, there's cool stuff on here. There's actually an edited version of the Farewell Tour uh, press conference. On, not the press conference, like the satellite conference in there where Ace falls asleep. And there's a <laughs> yeah, that's... there's a there's a longer version on there that that I'm sure you can you can get uh, where you know Ace I guess leaves or something and and you hear Gene go he, he's in really bad shape today he's in really bad shape so and you you actually hear that on there so uh, which is kind of cool because Ace his face looked like it was melting off that day mm. poor Ace <laughs> all right MTV What's... unplugged. Mm. There we go. I just ordered a copy of that on eBay. It's it's great. I mean, I don't know what else to say about it. The whole thing was great. The whole thing was great, the, and especially it, the you know the when they start to they meet and they they they're in the rehearsals doing the rehearsals and so on. Uh, it's just kind of a, such a cool cool thing to happen. And uh, you know, I watched it of course when it originally aired, which was twenty course. years ago. Can you believe that? <laughs> it's hard to believe now. Twenty years ago. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it was great, and I was happy. It finally, you know, they released it with uh, more songs, and um, so it was cool. And then now it's it's also on, of course, uh, Kissology uh, expanded, uh, and there's even more expanded stuff with all the takes you can get out there. I know you can get. But what's um, but cool so on it, here is it's, that it's one of my favorites. What's cool on here is like you have that little behind the scenes little documentary right before mm -hmm. the actual program starts which is really cool yeah and this was this was the start this this right here is why we're still talking about kiss today and anybody that disagrees with me you can suck my balls miss yes no but this is why you we have kiss today so think back if there wasn't this there would be no kiss reunion and if kiss did not put the makeup back on there would not be kiss today and, and then and then if you really want to think of it think of just how fucking awesome that show is yeah that how, shows awesome. How incredible. Regardless of the fact that we know Ace and Peter come on later, it's just a stunning performance all the way through. Incredible set list. Incredible mm -hmm. performance. Yeah, I happen to love the extended version with all the second takes. You know, Paul Stanley, you know, insisting on the second take of every time I look at you. Why? Because it's my song and I like it. You know, just <laughs> stuff like that. I, I absolutely adore it. I watch it. And I listen to Unplug that one show a hell of a lot. It's kind of my go-to bring a smile to my face when Kiss Land is melting down and everyone's butting heads with each other. It's just like I'm tuning you out and I'm putting on Unplugged and it's guaranteed instant happiness. So. I got I got three discs of the Unplugged rehearsals. Oh, but I don't, God, that's I, torture. I don't have the, uh, the Ace and Peter. Because there's another disc where it's Ace and Peter rehearsing. So this is just the, mm. the the four guys. But there's actually, and this was on on YouTube for a while, then it was taken down. But they were like they were making fun of Tommy Thayer pretty badly at that rehearsal. They were saying like Tommy walks like he's like always fanning a fart behind him, like his arms are swinging behind him. And Gene is does the walk, and somebody walks in and they go, "Hey, are you doing the Tommy Thayer walk?" Like they didn't hear Gene like make fun of it and like they were all in on it. And I remember it was so it was so funny. They were just they were picking on him. They were picking on him so bad. And then there's actually there's actually a, a really funny uh, 
a part where Paul starts yelling at Eric about the way he was playing the song. He's like, what's all these 16th note accents? What are you doing that for? And, and that actually, that dovetails into the next story that, that I, I want to tell about, about that. Because I was just watching the Sail Away show uh, from uh, Kiss Cruise 5. And I think it was like either between the first and second song or between the second and third song where Paul looks back at Eric and Paul goes, man, you had your caffeine today. Like, and he was just, he was just picking on him. And later on when they were doing the makeup shows and Eric was doing that little abridged version of uh, his, the God of Thunder, no, no, the 100,000 Years solo and Eric is playing and some fan in the front row is trying to clap and Paul goes, yeah, you can't clap to that. Well, I can't follow this either. Like, it's like he's just, he's been picking on Eric for like 20 years. Poor guy. <laughs> Anyway, it, back on point. MTV Unplugged. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. 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 Yes. Uh, the other thing, uh, Julian, you're talking about, you know, the, of course, the, the sound, the video, everything was right. Even the stage, the whole mm-hmm. ambiance, I guess, <laughs> of the whole thing. That, I mean, the rock and roll over stage. I was like, oh, man, that's just that's so cool. The floor. And the mannequins like behind the stage. The too. mannequins up above and behind. The weird kind of kiss, like, see-through logo that they had there in the back um it was just it was a, a perfect perfect piece it was classy yeah Without, it was actually, you know was. It, except for the one part on obviously it, it doesn't make it onto the release one the boo oh boos okay boos. yeah yeah right you know that's that's embarrassing but understandable considering you know what was going on it's just a little bit tacky uh that that happened but whatever you know absolutely stunning video it remains that and rightfully what did they do with that on kissology did they put the expanded version on a slightly expanded version yes yeah, so they did put an expanded version because on. i didn't yeah, ha- i didn't have like, that for many the years there's ha- more again i've got the the vhs I'll have sitting. that in front of me but but the DVD was selling for like a hundred bucks at one point on eBay. Yeah, so why? I, Who? I mean, I, I, I don't know. I sold mine. I you know, I, I wanted a hundred bucks more than I wanted the video. So I had the VHS at the time. I got rid of the DVD, and I was happy it came out on Kissology. That's another one, just like, you know, the the what was the Kiss uh, Confidential? Yeah, that that was. Mm-hmm. I mean, I know we already did a show on Kissology, but the MTV Unplugged is one thing that they did right yep. on Kissology. They did that right. So, and I know people were complaining because people are always like bemoaning. Oh, they're putting. We've already seen this, but no, they. It's a completely new edit, and it's I longer than the video. It's it's great. Yep. Quit your bitching. Take your medicine. <laughs> put it on. <laughs> oh, what's that going to become? The cat trade. Take your medicine. That should be yeah. All right. Take so, what's medicine. the next one that comes up? Uh, um, there's not one for a while coming. No, is it's the, the Psycho Circus, Circus video package. I actually threw mine oh. in the garbage. Yeah, you know what? I couldn't find mine, and I think I had that. I have it somewhere. That one. Um, geez, where is I it? Thought but I anyway, still had it's that. It's packed away, and uh, yeah, I, it came with 3D glasses, right? Yep, 3D glasses. Oh, that was a goofy thing that they did. I mean, it they came with done the, a lot the better form. on that video. They could Wait, have done here's, a lot here's, better here's on here's the package. Fun. Here's how they fucked us. They were like, hey, we're going to release a, a CD with it. You can get In Your Face, which, thank God, that song's not on the actual album. But they were like, we're going to release a different CD with each, with each band member. So you got to collect, the all, four, on the, collect yeah, all four. Uh-huh. Buy yeah. the same thing four times. That's what Kiss is. You have to buy the same thing with a different picture, different order, whatever. But what they did is instead of putting the CD facing out, they flipped the CD around. So like it was like a guessing game to get that. Like, And you had to... I remember sitting there with a flashlight, like looking in, trying to find out which one I was going to buy. And I was I like, what am I, "What am I doing? Why am I doing this?" I don't remember I, that, but I, somehow I got the Gene one, so I must well, have I got done to, like, what you did somehow. I got the Gene. I got the Gene one, and then I got two Pauls, and then I gave up. And I gave up. Yeah, like, that I, thing. I think the 3D um, thing was uh, Doc McGee's idea. The whole yeah, 3D. He, hey guys, you all gonna do? We gonna do that a thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's gonna be amazing, guys. Gonna be amazing. Yeah, that one. That was not you one know. of his better ideas. Yeah. I had mine came with Peter, so sorry. Yeah. And but that, the next, the next video though, made up for this. Way, way, way made up for it. Ooh. There it is. There it is. I no longer have this on. On yeah, I have it on. Uh, ooh, ooh, you have a. Uh, 
you have the actual. I have my DVD looks a little different because I bought it when it first came out on DVD. Yeah, I have the uh, the clamshell. No, no, no. The uh, the, the stupid little the, the little the not that cool case. The other kind of case that the DVDs would come in. Oh, the bigger one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what a cool video! First of all, didn't need to be two tapes because it was literally three minutes longer than a normal two-hour tape. So why is this on two tapes? Why? Because it's written, produced, and directed by Tommy Thayer. Well, this was a great video. There's everything about this video is great. It doesn't mention the famed, um, the fame show that Peter Chris sat out, which I thought was kind of tongue in cheek. They just completely glossed over that. Completely glossed over that show. Which what was the date of that show? I have it here. It was Columbus, Georgia, April fifth, nineteen ninety seven. Peter Chris sat out. Completely glossed over it, but it it's whatever. Um, but this was a cool video. I remember begging my mother to get this the day it came out. Actually, I had seen Kiss the night before at Madison Square Garden, you know, November 23rd. And then November 24th, this came out. And uh, I begged my mother. I was like, come on, please, 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 please. And it was two videotapes at the time. So what was this? This was like twenty nine ninety nine in 1998. You know, and for a little kid, that was a lot of money. I had begged her to get this for me. She's like, well, I'll get it for you for Christmas. Like, I can't wait that long. I need it now. So and uh, so she she caved and she got it for me, and this this video is awesome, awesome, awesome. Can't say enough good things about it. I'm gonna have to watch this today because you know what I have not watched this in probably 15 or more years. It's so cool. It's so so cool. I watched it a little bit yesterday. I was watching it, uh, and the thing that I, I liked it. I like how they you know they did the uh, photo sessions and. Again, at the beginning of this one, they show it's kind of a history of the band. Again, yes, they hit fast forward once you get to nineteen like <laughs> yeah, the eighties is like I, nothing yeah. happened. Yeah, uh, <laughs> uh, but then uh, you know they 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 do the tour of the the uh, you know Tiger Stadium uh, opening thing there. Um, I the one thing I wish they would have done and they should have done to me they should have put Tiger Stadium the whole show on this in video. I agree with you. I'll, and pro shot. I don't know why they didn't, but that would have made it yeah, the it, perfect it, it video. It still completely boggles the mind why they did not release a full length concert, long, you know, DVD at the end of the Alive Worldwide tour. And it, you know, when I yeah. got this and I watched it, and it was just, it didn't do a whole lot for me. Yeah, it was interesting, but we'd been glued to the internet for two years during the whole reunion, and it's like just. Give me a concert. I missed the you know the two opportunities I had to to go to any of the shows during that. I just wanted a concert. So this has always kind of had a negative thing for me because it wasn't the second coming was not the full concert. It wasn't even like it was just the documentary. It was like where is the show? I and you know I I wanted that so desperately and they didn't do that for many years. So well, they uh, have. I mean, there are several. There are more pro shot concerts from this tour than any other Kiss tour. Yes, we Kiss are tour. very lucky they with filmed the amount every of material show, in there. Right? Yeah, they filmed every show. So here are the ones that, and I'm excluding the ones that are in Kissology because we have not We have the incomplete Tiger Stadium, which is dog shit on Kissology. Complete, just dog shit. And then the bonus disc was Madison Square Garden, which is better than what's on yep. the whatever. But here's what I have for pro shot stuff from the 96-97 tour. There's two versions of Atlanta 96. There's a multi-camera version that was, I think, aired on Japanese TV or yep. readied for Japanese TV. And there's another version where it's shot with the camera from Peter's drum riser, and then there's uh, the camera in the pit. So that's, that's cool. Then we have uh, December 31st, 96. Missing the first five songs, but still pro shot. My first Kiss show. We have Columbus, Georgia, pro shot. Toledo 97, pro shot. Toledo's we- really good. Toledo is really good. And then we have also uh, uh, a lot of the Rocky M. Ring show from, from 97. We have that pro shot as well. Uh, but then there's, then there's co- two cool TV programs that we had too. Uh, the Aura Prima, the outtakes on that, which a lot of that stuff ended up on the second coming. And then we had this called uh, Viva, another Spanish TV show from 96 as well. And some of those outtakes ended up on uh, second coming as well too. So we have a ton of cool pro shot stuff from that tour. So... Um, but again, there should have been a super professional put out package for that, and it would have 
that should have came out in between the reunion tour ending and the uh, Psycho Circus tour starting because there was a little bit of a lull in the time. We didn't know that Kiss was coming back. There were rumors. They said they were in the studio, but it was a long time between July 97 and uh, September 98. It was a long time. I mean, I know it was only a little over a year, but it was for us, it was a long time. And there should have been a Kiss product in between there, in my opinion. Yeah, so there's probably a whole lot more pro shots out there. I mean, what are the ones that they included on Kissology? Uh, Weenie Roast, which is, oh, yeah. is really that's, good. And wasn't one of the other bonus discs Irvin Meadows? Irvine Meadows? Irvine Meadows is the Weenie Roast. Yeah, but wasn't there the full concert later that year? That's also a pro shot. I'm pretty sure. Uh, that wasn't a bonus disc. The bonus disc was Madison Square Garden. Okay. 96. Incomplete. Meh. Didn't it cut yeah. out Ace and Peter stuff? Well, I mean, naturally. Yep. So, <laughs> I find it, every time I do it, I laugh. I don't like. I don't. People get pissed. I just laugh. They hated Peter Chris so much that they edited him out of Dodger Stadium '98. Like, <laughs> like, can you believe that? Like, we hate this guy so much. We're just gonna edit him out of this concert. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, but that one exists with him. So, yeah, I think I gave that to you. Hmm. No. I've- no, no. Can't, I can't, um, re- can't remember. Can't, I can't remember either. But um, but anyway, so Second Coming was cool, but you're right. I completely agree. There should have been a super cool – there should have been a pay-per-view because pay-per-views are still big at the time. Yeah, when you think of it follows MTV Unplugged and how good that is, how good this could have been, riding on how fantastic the reunion was at, at that point. The initial point, you know, I think if they'd done a better video and maybe a live album at that point, you know, it could have bought them more time in between doing that and Psycho Shithouse. So. Did they really think that Ace and Peter's performance on the reunion tour was that bad? I mean, there were some nights where, like, Peter would just continue playing and he's just, like, chewing his face off. Like, that guy, he was just just keeping time back there. Were they that bad? I mean, there were some times where I was like, oh, he fucked up or, oh, he's fucked up. But was it that bad? I don't remember being that bad. I don't remember listening to any of these shows, and this was at the time I was doing a hell of a lot of trading, you know, trying to get every single show in from that tour, audio or, well, audio, because I was never into video. Um, And I would listen to the shows, and I was never saying, oh, my God, this is a train wreck. Oh, this is awful. This is terrible. I never felt that listening to a lot of the shows. You might hear a flub here. Yeah, Peter screwed up there. Well, you know what? Equally, Gene just blew that line. Gene just sang the wrong freaking verse. You know, mm-hmm. Paul Stanley just made a mistake. You know, they're humans. They're performing. I never thought that Ace and Peter were horrendously worse than Gene and Paul. I, th- I, th- I thought the most of the performances were pretty powerful. Um, obviously, you could tell there was a lot of help in the drumming department with the triggers, which I not I got to say I'm not a gigantic fan of, when, especially when you're watching him and he's like... He's barely touching those drums. Yeah, <laughs> freaking kitten paws, you know. But... Music, yeah. Musically, they were solid. So, you know, that, that's, I, I that's. I had a friend on that tour who was throwing guitar picks at Peter's drums. It was going, doosh, doosh, just like flicking a guitar pick. I'm like, the guy's barely touching those drums, man. Yeah. So, and actually, shout out to the Accept drummer, Christopher Williams. He's a Nashville cat. He owns the drum set from this tour. So, shout yeah. out to him. He's got one of the coolest pieces of Kiss memorabilia. Yeah, that uh, cool. it would be a very awesome set tone. All right, let's move on to the next video, and I'm just going through my list here. Is there another video? Or this this is the last V this is the last VHS, isn't it? Oh God, we got to the end. I still had a web page. They run out of VHSs. Yeah, and I'm, I don't want to talk about Absolutely. Ace Vision. Do we want to talk about Ace Vision? It sucks. Yeah, it isn't all that it could have been, but it was a good effort. Well, let's talk about this, and this is unofficial, but it should be official. You know what this is. You know what it is. Visual Evolution. Oh, yeah. 73 to 79. This is awesome. And this was put out by the same guy that did all the Kiss Vision stuff in the 90s, and it's it's awesome. This should have been put out, and there's a lot of great stuff on it. There's a... You know, Ladies in Waiting from Detroit 76 is on here. And it's just, I just think the way that this is edited together and all the clips that we're using this is awesome. I wish I had a VHS. Uh, I wish I still had a VCR that I could watch this today. I never you, I never transferred it. I should. Yeah, I you never can did. find that on DVD uh, out you? there if you look hard enough. Okay. All right. I'm going to look. Because I wish, and I was always going to do the, the transfers myself. You know, I was talking about 
you know, earlier how I did a lot of transfers myself because I really felt like there were a lot of subpar transfers done by just people just wanted to slap shit together and a lot of the menus were just were not good. So, and I'll, I'll talk about my, my TV compilations that I made years ago when I used to make DVDs. Um, what always bothered me is that if I went out and I got one of the TV compilations that were treated, if you clicked on, let's just say there were four clips on there. If you cl- clicked on the first clip, it would continue playing to the next. And I always hated that. I'm like, I only want to watch this one clip. So that my DVDs, you click on one clip, after that clip is done, it returns you back to the menu or you could hit play all and it'll so play the ch- all. you made chapters out of them. Well, I just made it good. I mean, there were still chapters in those other ones. <laughs> you made it good. I made it good. There were still chapters. Like, you could still go through. Like, if you if you clicked on the third clip, it would play, you know, from the third clip yeah. all the way down to the end. I, I never liked that. I'm like, this is this is stupid. This sucks. So right. mine, and it took me a couple days. I mean, I, what was I? I was 21, 20 at the time. I had nothing going on. So I sat there for hours doing this. And all of my DVDs, if you, if you click on, you know, you click on the Sure No Something video clip, you'll play that, then it'll return you back to the menu so you can click on something else. So, and I made two, uh, actually, you know what? I did all of the TV compilations. I did, I'll get, I'll show, I'll show them right now. I did, uh, there's my TV collection 74 to 78. I have that. And then I have 79 to 80. And then I did 81 to 82, and those are the only ones that I did, because after that I kind of lost interest. And uh, but those were those were cool, and I think that someone should do something something like that. That would be cool. I mean, I know it would probably be impossible to get the rights to all the all these masters and you know whatever. That's why we got abridged versions of a lot of this stuff on Kissology, you know, because there's other music that we have have to get the rights to, and blah blah blah. Uh, unfortunately, the very best video clip ever. Kiss Land of Hype and Glory 77 was butchered on Kissology, not mm-hmm. by any fault of anybody else, just there were a lot of other music in that segment when it aired on NBC. But, yeah. Um, I was going to say, you know, going back to, I was thinking back to after Kiss Exposed, when I saw those bootleg videos, uh, that's when the, I started seeing uh, availability of being able to buy bootleg videos, uh, three, or either through the mail, or I was getting it through the mail. That alleged magazine. Them. Yeah, it was the back of a yeah, like gold mine or something. Or, or I was also finding even a record store. There was a record store uh, in the East Bay that had bootleg videos, Kiss bootleg videos, even some bootleg CDs. That one that was called Rock Bottom Records. Yeah, I remember things. Rock Bottom Records. Yeah, so uh, it was you know a, a place that I could get some. So that I remember picking up and finding you know the Winterland seventy five. Uh, Houston, seventy six, I think. Uh, Mass Square Garden, seventy seven. Um, Dynasty, seventy nine. Largo. You know, those are the ones that I remember picking up. I, I think I got I got more, but um, Detroit um, also like seventy five, I believe. Um, so that was cool. You know, it's like oh, I saw part of it. Now I I'm able to get the the full shows and see all of it. You know, in its glory. It's. I remember. So I remember going to. You know, I'm a, I'm a Jersey guy. I remember going to the Rainbow Rockatorium in Brick, New Jersey, and uh, I mean, a lot of people I assumed purchased stuff from uh, the guy who owned it. His name was Gary Danko, and uh, he he kind of spurred my quest for wanting every Kiss video I can get my hands on. I used to go into that store and I would buy. I would spend so much money in that store, yeah. and. And it, here's a here's a cool funny. I don't know if I ever told this story. I might have told it again. So, yeah, stop me if you're this one. Where the printing press that was printing the Kiss Got Milk posters happened to be in my father's building in New York City in uh, in '98 or '99. And what he would do is he would go down to the printing press and he would take hundreds of copies of the Got Milk poster and just take them off the press, roll them up, and take them home for me. So what I would do is I would have all these Got Milk posters that nobody had yet. And you know what? You know what's fucked? I don't even have one anymore. Anyway, so I, I would take like stacks of these posters and I'd give them to Gary to sell. And he'd be like, okay, you gave me five posters. Here's five videos. And that's how it started. Wow. <laughs> that's, that's how it started. There you go. So cool, a cool little story. And, I, and I'm, you know, I'm assuming the feds are going to be knocking at my door any minute now. They'll be like, that's where those 150 <laughs> Got Milk posters that we were missing, They're missing 20 years ago. We finally got you. We got you. We confessed. So, but, um, but yeah, I mean, you just remember like when you had, when you had these VHS tapes, bootleg VHS tapes were just as big too. 
And I mean, yeah, how many how many official V8 tapes were there? There weren't that many. Nope. So if you wanted more Kiss, you had to get the bootlegs. And just remember yeah. all the fanzines with the catalog inserts of you know these video traders. Exactly. I mean, quite a lot of those guys are still around. I'm not going to name any of them, but you know there were just masses of catalog lists. And, and the, you know, and I showed this one the last time I was in here. Yeah, the video king, Mark Chikini. Oh, there. So that's where Kiss again. We go back. Kiss missed the boat. Another time. I mean, they could have been releasing those all back then. Yet, when you look and back still, at when you look back at how successful all of these videos were, I mean, I think all gold or platinum, they've had a stellar run visually of what they have managed to release right. through the years. I mean, we've we've deliberately just spoken about the VHS tapes because that was the beginning for us uh, with with these formats. But they've gone on into the DVDs, you know. Our show on Kiss Blu-rays is very short. It's like, welcome to the show. Uh, we we're talking about Kiss Blu-rays today. Kiss and Scooby-Doo. Scooby-Doo and Detroit Rock City. Boom. Thanks for joining us. You know, that's the Blu-ray discussion. So th they've done the catalog refresh in the past by putting multiple titles on DVD at, that they did an okay job on. I don't think, you know, the transfers are that great. If they do the catalog update to Blu-ray standards, hopefully they're going to give a lot of attention to, number one, getting better source material, if, especially for the Kissologies, and fixing some of the issues with those. Um, Remember, a lot of that stuff is on videotape, so sometimes whatever is, is. Yeah, but also... But there are still better versions. There are, Winterland, there are better versions. Oh, you know, awful, Houston, Land. there are better versions. Those are the ones that jump off, you know, right right into mind. Why, how come, and this would, they should release Largo 77. Just release that ad on its own. Because first of all, that was the, the rumored video that everybody wanted. Everybody, they heard that Largo 77 was out there. You know, they saw a clip of it on Dick Clark's Golden Greats in 1978. Or was it 79? But they aired Shout Out Loud and Rock and Roll All Night from Largo. People heard about it. And you could actually see clips of Largo in the, uh, in the eye video. Oh, he's going to get something. He's probably going to get something cool. But you could see that uh, Largo 77, like they took the time. Largo 77 was shot way better than Houston. And you got to see the whole, you know, the whole production of Kiss at, at the time. So what is he's got? He's got Largo on DVD. You gotta put the headphones back on. He doesn't know we're even talking about it right now, which is we we say whatever we want. <laughs> there you go. There you yes. go. See, the ultimate Largo. edition. Largo. Okay. I've got, I've got two versions of Largo. I've got <laughs> three versions actually. I got yeah, the Mick. ultimate uh, Capital Center, right? Yeah. Is that mix? Bang this is an uh, interactive menu, six, uh, 5.1 surround and 2.0 stereo. Who did it? Is it? Did Mick do that one? Mickey Digitally, e? uh, Mick. Mick yeah, e. right, so, e. yeah. so that's the one I got. And then I have another version. And then I have obviously the abridged one they released on Kissology, which I don't know why they did that. Yeah, so, um, you know, Kiss, you can do this <laughs> yourselves and uh, give us, you know, the fans what they want. Um, or, or, or this, which. Yeah, there's. There's several oh, well. of these possibilities of all those classic era shows that and, they, and this, they can do. This one, actually, that was sold by the guy who sold the video, the uh, the master. Oh, Remember God. how he sold that to the European oh, collector? And God. then he was selling these. I actually bought one direct. Um, he uh, Well, he needs to take his medicine because he still has the other two nights. He's got them. And no one's been ever to... No one's been able to get them out of him, or he disappeared. Or but all three nights he has, God, he has I, all three nights. I hope he doesn't burn them. Sorry. <laughs> that was that 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 face. I just like yeah. So, yeah. Julian, we talked about you know, uh, of course, Kissology series in a, a past episode podcast, and uh, um, again, like you were saying, they've they've done well on on sales. Uh, of either the VHS throughout the years and the and the Kissology series have sold well. It's it's mind blowing that they don't keep releasing more. It's been years, many mm -hmm. years, mm -hmm. several years since they released the the, the last video. So seven what seven heck? years. What was the last one in two thousand and eight? Right. Right. So they couldn't come up with two thousand seven. Yes, they couldn't come up with anything in that time. I mean, they on, they're not touring. Money. They're not touring that much that Tommy doesn't have time. So, 
you know, that there must be other things because if you think of what they've left out of all these video releases, surely they could, it's product, it's money. You know, how much effort does it really take? It only yeah. takes will, so the will's not there. Because or that, is it, does it have to do with their record contract? That, that could be what's holding it up. They're, maybe they're just, <laughs> maybe they don't want to hand over X, Y, and Z to the record company because they're not, the paycheck isn't there or maybe something. Who knows? Mm -hmm. it, it could be, mm -hmm. I don't, it, I don't want to put all the blame on Kiss, but maybe some of the blame is there and then maybe they didn't negotiate their contract good enough. So maybe whatever they do give to Universal, maybe they don't, I don't know. I don't know. You know, you'll, you'll never know. I mean, what have we had since Kissology came out? Love Gun Deluxe? It's a $30 magnet. Let's get real. Yep. When, uh, when is, do, do you know when their contract runs out? I think it's uh -huh. an open-ended contract. Yeah, I it's really... It's as simple I as think... that. And they were not smart enough business... I mean, everyone thinks that they're brilliant businessmen. We do not know the details of what their contract is or their arrangement with Universal is. What we do know, and mm -hmm. we can extrapolate, is that certain bands, such as Def Leppard, have taken a very heavy-handed approach to dealing with Universal. Bon Jovi has left Universal, you know, basically middle finger. And Kiss has not. So... You know, I think the relationship is probably tied up that Universal has the upper hand in that relationship mm. because the bands that have, you know, very much protected their material um, to a very great extent are the ones that have been smart, you know, and KISS, you know, maybe has not been as smart. But, yeah, there are business reasons. It's not fair to just blame Gene and Paul or Tommy for not working hard enough to put out product. There have got to be reasons. And who right? knows? I mean, there was uh, there was... They professionally recorded the uh, Cobo Hall 2009 shows. And also, there's still that rumor that the Vegas shows from last year are going to come out, too. Um, then there's that movie that uh, Alan Parker yeah. uh, is working on. Um, or was working on. Was, or who knows where where yep. we're ever going to see it. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of cool stuff unearthed you know, for that. that you know, album. Kobo, I think, if I'm going to think of anything, they also filmed the shows in uh, Monterey. In, I think 2004 for a release. Oh yeah, that's right. I forgot about that. And I, I would love to see some of that stuff because obviously if they manage to put out Rock the Nation, which is an absolute monstrosity um, in terms of its editing, you know, I would love to see yeah. a, a Mexican show in full, you know, sure. some, some of the international stuff. There's the, you know, the pro shot that was uh, released in, uh, where is it, Buenos Aires, I think is that, that one that shows up on Amazon sometimes. You know, they, they've got material, which, mm -hmm. and they've got material that falls uh, during that period that they were outside of Universal. And do you know what the best part of the Rock the Nation DVD is? Putting it back in its cover? No. <laughs> Me. Yeah. I'm on that. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm in that, that. That's the yeah. show you went to. <laughs> I went to both of those shows. I went to both of those shows. So, and you could see me several times in the, uh, in the crowd in those shows. And that was, that was, that was a great summer. That was a great, great, great summer. And I remember the Instant Lives were brand new, mm -hmm. and everybody had to have them. Yep. And I remember I purchased, my, my first Instant Live that I purchased was at Hershey PA, July 18th, 2004. And I purchased it, and I take it out, and I go, oh my God, it's signed. And I guess they, had, they were signing some and just selling them like that, and mine was signed by the band. So I was very lucky. It was very cool. I remember waiting in line at Concord to get that one. I mean, that. Yeah, I mean, me mu musically. I mean, we've <laughs> yeah. gone a little bit off topic here for releases. Um, you know. Well, I mean, what is what are the DVD only releases? The DVD only releases are, and I'm not talking about the DVDs that were put out of VHS. I'm talking about actual DVD releases that were just DVD, excluding Kissology. Was the um, the Symphony and and Rock the Nation? Those were the only two DVDs. Yep. And Symphony, I have zero interest in ever seeing again really i love the symphony i watched that recently and it just does nothing for me i i don't like the costumes i don't like how they look on them I, all right because they 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 made them better once they did the hour smith tour you know gene had a uh, gene's initial alive costume what well, didn't look all that good i, I don't Peter like i don't like the sad. look of, i don't like the look of the band i don't like the look of the audience you know they're it's like a dead it's like a dead yeah. audience it's like um and i don't like the arrangements it really does nothing for me 
So I've never been a fan of Symphony. It never will be. I like Great Expectations. That's really cool. But I, I mm. thought it was complete cornball to have an orchestra or Symphony dressed up in Kiss makeup. I thought that was stupid. I thought the arrangements were Mickey Mouse. Um, I liked it. Yeah, you know, it's it's a matter of taste. There is no wrong or right answer mm -hmm. to the to the question. You know, it just doesn't. Because remember, remember the time we were hungry for anything Kiss. Because they, three years ago, we did three years prior to that, we didn't think there was going to be a Kiss. So now you had this thing. I was like, hey, this is kind of cool. I can get into this. Whereas musically, I took Rock the Nation. I'll never play that video again, but I will play my rip of the audio from it because yeah. it, it's a decent show and a fun era of when they were digging back into the catalog and throwing some interesting stuff. And the Japanese edition, which I bought, came with a bonus CD with, you know, I think it was King of the Psycho Nighttime Circus. World, Psycho Circus, and I can't remember what else. Mm. Uh, all, all the way. way. All the all way. Is All the Way is not on the DVD? thought it was. I thought it was. I can't remember. I'm getting old. I think it is. I just, I didn't, I, I only don't know just because I, I didn't bring over any DVDs. I just brought over my VHS. Let's see. So, I mean, these are, these are unofficial DVDs in here. All of this. See all of this? this these are all my bootleg DVDs. I got a lot. <laughs> I got a lot. That's a good starter set. Yeah. And I got a lot of cool stuff. So, actually, you know what? Since, uh, no, I'm not going to do that. I, I was going to do something and then I decided not to. <laughs> That's an editor out comment. Oh, Jesus, gotta write another, <laughs> another one. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, 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 didn't, I didn't say anything, so we don't have to. We don't have to edit that. It, just, it was just me going. Should I? No, eh. no, don't do it. When, I'm not. It, when in doubt, don't. All I, right. I, agree. Let's bring the show to an end. So that's our little trip down through uh, the VHS. VHS. Um, sorry, <laughs> just uh, can't speak. The VHS history of the band. And I, the only one we've left out, and I'll mention it quickly, is Vinnie Vincent's Metal Tech. And that's all you need to say, because Ooh. that is one monstrosity. Winnie Vincent? Winnie. So that's, that's another VHS tape. And I, I'm not even going to go into Bruce's, because there's some meatloaf stuff. Uh, but whatever, that's just too much of a tangent. So that's our VHS show. VHS. Kiss VHS. Who knows what the video... Of the future will be for kiss and that's something to ponder but if you've enjoyed this topic and want to chime in on any of these videos and uh, disagree with us agree with us put out your own opinion come over to the kiss faq board and find the topic for this episode and join in you know thank you for joining us today andrew thank you for getting up ken <laughs> thank you for being here and we'll see you all next time bye for now Thank you for spending time listening to the KISS FAQ podcast today. All sales are final. There are no refunds. If you like, look us up on Facebook or come over to the KISS FAQ message board and discuss the topic we broadcast today. We hope to see you again.